Okay, so I'm back at home base today and we're going to talk a bit about vocal effects. Alright, in the last video I made where I looked into Voloco as a way to be able to give auto tune, it turns out that the iOS update changed it entirely so you can actually use the application. So it forced me to take a step back and really, really think why do I use auto tune? So don't, don't, don't get me wrong for a second yet. Autotune is a great effect, but it's just an effect. It can be a substitute for your voice because at the end of the day, as producers, as artists, as creative people, we have a story to tell. Whether it's the work we play, whether it's the tunes we make, whether it's what we say. We can't set it so that we're heavily reliant on just one tool to be able to effectively do a lot of things. So with a local gone well not really gone but it forced me to really really rethink and and decide do i really need auto tune to give the best performance i possibly can do and in reality the answer was no so in this video i'm going to show my vocal chain workflow now this is a, this isn't completely my idea a lot of things i learned from the past few weeks of me trying to research and learn from and also I had to do a bit of self-reflection. I looked into the applications I was using, the apps I had, and I had to make some sort of conscious decision as to, okay, what effects do I really use? What do I have? Because this isn't about me recommending every single app that's out there. This is just me recommending stuff that worked well for me in my workflow. This video is gonna be focused on GarageBand. And the reason why I'm using GarageBand is because it's an entry-level application that anyone can get because it's pretty much free on iOS devices. And also, it has this interesting limit where I can only put a maximum of seven plugins. So it forces me to not overdo the amount of plugins that I can add because it's very easy for me to stack and add stuff in hopes that it will make the vocals better. When in actuality, it may not have much of an adverse effect. So let's get into this. These are my vocal plugins that I use. I'm gonna go through all the applications that I actually keep on my iPad. And I'm my, my iPhone, so this is compatible for both devices. Let's get to it. Whoosh. GarageBand starts here with a few of them. It starts here with a noise gate with a compressor, and it starts here with a visual EQ. So these are really, really great effects. The noise gate is a really useful tool to be able to cut out the noise. Personally, I don't use it a lot. I kind of wish the noise gate was as like a noise reduction plugin, which is why I start. Whenever I record vocals, it's usually loud and noisy. In fact, the vocals you're hearing right now are pretty loud and noisy. So what I do is I treat it with Bruce Free. So here's the effect of Bruce Free. If we look at the before, this is what I sound like. And if we look at the after, this is what I sound like with Bruce Free. This is me recording a test audio for testing the noise reduction feature on GarageBand. Let's give it a go. Three, two, one, go. It's a simple plugin that takes a sample of the noise. It does a bit of reverse algorithm and finds some sort of way to reduce the noise. That's the first thing I would do. Usually you want to keep the levels consistent because sometimes when you're singing or talking, you talk really, really slow and really, really loud sometimes. What compression does is it keeps everything leveled up together. It makes the quiet parts a bit louder and the louder parts a bit quieter. You can always set the threshold, the attack. You can tweak it in a way that matches what you're trying to feel. A compressor helps keep the sound normalized. So it's something you want to take a look into if you're trying to find a way to be able to get a really, really good vibe. So we've got the compressor here and we've not really added any applications yet. Let's continue up on this chain here. The next thing I would usually add is back filter. And the reason why I add back filter is because it does an additional level of compression, but it's got this triple band preset, which shout out to you, Joloco, for giving this in. It's got a filter element, it's got a limiter. I believe it has some sort of saturation in it. It's a great way for me to get the levels up in the lead vocal. And this is one of the staple plugins that I've used for the past year and a half. And it's really, really helped me out. Sometimes I might need to tweak the gain if it's too loud because I don't want it to be clipping. So clipping is when you see it on the red. You really don't want your vocals to be on the red. 
usually once I get the vocals up to this level, the rest is just me trying to like tweak it or adjust it. If I feel like the vocal is still too noisy or I need to do some work in there, I can add EQ before, EQ after. The general idea of me adding EQ is just me trying to find frequencies that are kind of harsh in it and try and like adjust it. Sometimes I might need to comp the vocals, which is where I look at the vocal stem. If I find any part that's a bit too noisy, I manually trim it or I make use of the noise gate to clean it up or I use the EQ curve to cut out specific frequencies. The main reason I do this though is just to create space in the vocals. Again, it's not necessarily perfect, but it gives an idea as to the power of EQ. The EQ I use a lot of the time is LRC5. It's not just because it's a free EQ that is accessible to other people, but it was the first one I started using and it's really powerful for what it does. It gives you five bands to be able to easily adjust and for what it does, it is really great, honestly. Neo Silicon, shout out to you. Seriously, you did a great job on that EQ app and thankful for it. Sometimes if I want to create space in the vocals, I make use of the wider Infected Mushroom plugin. It helps expand it so that it's not all sitting in the same place. So this is why I'm just adding creative effects here so that I determine the type of vocal. For example, think of a choir where you've got multitudes of people. Not everyone is going to be singing in the exact same tone at the exact same level. So you want to spread it out so that it gives a feeling of wit. That's why I make use of this particular plugin. I could also do some creative effects with the Hass effect. And with the Hass effect, I can use the Stereo Lag Delay plugin or the Blue Mango Hass effect, which I did a video on previously. So this is more of a specialized tool if I want to give, like if I want to put a bit more weight into the vocals here. But sometimes I run out of space for plugins on this. So what I personally do is I remove the effect EQ. The effect EQ is similar to, depending on the preset you're using, a lot of times it's just a simple EQ preset. What I can do in this case is I can add a multi-effect. Example of multi-effects I use is back filter. If I haven't used it before, I can add in Dramble as an effect rack, or I can use Mixbus on my iPad. Because I believe as of right now, it's available for the iPad. But it is, this is where I add the multi-effect. Worst case, if I really want to add more effects to this, what I do is I, is I take a critical look at all of the ones I currently have there. If there's nothing I need, I, if there's any effect that isn't making much of a difference, I remove it. Some other creative effects I've used is the attack softener. It's, it makes a subtle difference, but it was really, really good for me to be able to get some really, from some tonal changes, to get that slow attack and removal of the harshness of, of the vocal. This is me recording a test audio for testing the noise reduction feature on GarageBand. Let's give it a go. In our test audio for testing the noise reduction feature on GarageBand. Let's give it a go. Three, two, four, testing. This is me recording our test audio for testing the noise reduction feature on GarageBand. Sometimes you want to give your vocals a bit of space. One of the applications I use for this would be Zero Reaver by Blamsoft. It's a simple application. It's also free on the App Store but it helps give a decent sense of reverb and space and it's in a simplistic interface. Let's give it a go. Three, two, one, go. Uh, Let's give it a go. Three, two, one, go. Other effects I've used for vocals will be the black hole reverb where it gives you this otherworldly reverb using the stock preset there and it's insanely good for that. For example, I actually use it in Pete Jones' remix of Hold On, which you should definitely check out. Hey. 
yeah, hope this video was helpful. I know it's a bit of a long talk, but I, I felt it was worthwhile because it allows me to be able to share all the thoughts I've learned so far. And then, yeah, let me know your thoughts. Feel free to leave a comment down there. Let me know what's what been useful for you. Take it easy. Wash.